What's up, everybody? Keith here with the Arnie's. We are back this week talking The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 6. I'm joined here with Matthew Johnson and Austin Terry. But before we go any further, you may have noticed this is not your normal main episode of the Arnie's. No, no. Matthew, tell him what this is. Well, Keith, begrudgingly, we're back. Happy to be here, of course. But, unfortunately, or fortunately for some, who the hell knows, it's time for the podcast within the podcast. We're talking The Mandalorian, so we are no longer the Arnie's. No, we are the Mandos talking the Lorian, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to talk the show. So there you go. Austin, how you doing? I'm doing great. Unfortunately, today I can't come in all happy and giddy like I usually am because I need to call an emergency meeting of our Jedi Council. Oh, no. For the past couple of weeks, we've been establishing some Jedi characters. Matt, of course, is a Ruto Order who uses the Force to fly. I am Sud Bondin. I use my mind powers to keep my shoelaces nice and tight so they never come untied. And then we have our problem child, Keith, also known as Kenth. He's leaning towards the dark side, and I think we just got to get it out in the open. What? How am I leaning towards the dark side? Well, Keith, I'll tell you. I just wanted to use the Force to fly, obviously. Austin, who has trouble keeping his shoes tied, wanted to avert that issue. Makes sense. But Keith, a.k.a. Kenth Hamney, or whatever the hell your last Star Wars name, generator name is, he just jumped at the opportunity. He said, um, I want Force Lightning. And we were like, oh, no. And we should have known earlier, Austin, but this was the start of something we couldn't prepare for. The fact that are we going to have to be the Luke Skywalker to, the, to this young boy, Ben Solo? Are we going to have to kill him in the middle of the night while he's asleep? I don't know. Maybe. And and really, it's it's not even it's not even Kent's fault. We should have called it out as the Jedi elders. We should have mm. called it out right away when he said lightning and we didn't. We let him go. I but know. but do you guys remember why I chose lightning? Does it matter, Keith? Remind us, Keith. Remind us. To grill burgers, man. Grilling burgers is one step away from grilling people. Everyone knows no. that, Keith. That's what Master Yoda always tells us. You know, fear leads to hate. Hate leads to anger. Anger leads to suffering. And just the same thing here. Grilling burgers leads to what? Killing people. <laughs> no, my my main goal is to open up my own little burger joint on the in the streets of Coruscant. You Whoa. know, I'm not going to be a part of the uh, the main Star Wars bullshit. You trying to freaking take away Dexter Jetster's business and his diner? No, Dexter and I are going to be together. We're teaming oh. up. Oh, okay. Is he going to be together because you forced him to with your mind powers? Oh shoot, maybe. But <laughs> we'll keep that off the record. This is it. This is it, Ruto. It's, the time has come. We got to be like Mace Window. We got to strike this guy down. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to trust our old friend, Kent. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And maybe he's just a simple man trying to make his way in the galaxy, not unlike Django and Boba Fett. Maybe he really does just want to use these newfound lightning powers to have a successful burger restaurant. Maybe that's true. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come back next week, reflect, see where things stand. And we'll see if Keith seems to be further down the path. And if so, then yeah, we'll use our lightsabers. You remember how Qui-Gon opened that door in Phantom Menace? That's what we'll use our lightsabers on his body. We'll just stick it in, kind of massage it in a circle, <laughs> and make sure he never comes back. Ouch. We'll get some nice little circular Kent patties, and then we'll fire up that grill. There you go. Well, all right. Let's jump into Season 2, Episode 6 of The Mandalorians. Before we get into this episode... Let's do a quick recap on Season 2 so far. My thoughts have basically stayed stayed the same. Um, Austin, let's go with you first. What about you? What are you thinking on Season 2 so far? Yeah, I think uh, throughout Season 2, you know, I've kind of been the most up and down on the season. I think the season has had some real high points, especially Episode 5 with the introduction of Ashoka. I think it's been a fun season. I think it's been really enjoyable. Uh, this episode specifically, it's fine. Uh, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's great. Um, I think it's just fine. And I think we had some really cool moments. But overall, I don't think it's the best of the season or anything like that. That's fair. I, I really enjoyed this episode. Um, like I've talked about already, I think I'm just happy that I really didn't like season one. I thought the pilot episode and the finale of season one were really fun. But everything in between, while there were some high points and some fun moments, it ultimately kind of felt like a waste of time. But this season has really turned things around for me. I'm a big fan of the show now. I like the direction we're heading. I like how they balance these quote-unquote side quest episodes with the actual main story. And I like seeing how sometimes those overlap with what seems like a side quest actually ends up giving us more background and story than maybe we expected. 
predicted. So yeah, this episode surprised me. The fact that we kind of predicted that we'd be going to Tython for the finale and maybe we'd get caught off guard on the way. Nope. We go straight there and what ends up happening is pretty damn cool. So I was a big fan of this episode. I understand Austin's point though. It is It does get a bit samey, even though it's a short episode, maybe a bit too long. But ultimately, I had fun with it. Maybe not my favorite, but probably one of my favorites out of the entire series so far. But my thoughts have stayed the same as far as the series goes as a whole. I mean, I dig the side stories as long as they do something cool with them, which they have. So no complaints there. But there's no other thoughts on season two so far. Let's jump into this episode. Spoiler warning. Uh, If you have not watched episode six yet, please go watch it before you uh, move on with our podcast here. Yeah, give us a pause, go check out Season 2, Episode 6, see the return of that legendary character, and then come on back and we'll be here waiting for you. Alright, well let's jump on in. So, just to start off, the title of this episode is called The Tragedy. It's directed by... Robert Rodriguez, you probably know him from Spy Kids 1 and Spy Kids 2. And 3D Game Over. And the upcoming film, We Could Be Heroes. And its prequel, The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. What a career. Sin City was also pretty cool. And written by Jon Favreau. And of course, the cast. uh, We got Pedro Pascal back as the Mandalorian. Boba Fett is back in this episode. Timuru Morrison is reprising his role as Boba. Ming Nguyen as Fennec Shand. We got Giancarlo Esposito as Moff Gideon and Gina Carano as Cara Dune. Any thoughts on the cast before we move on? I think it's great for Tamara Morrison that he got to come back and reprise his role as Boba Fett. Um, You know, we've talked about it in some of our Star Wars episodes. For whatever reason, Boba Fett's been built up as this legendary character in the Star Wars universe. Um, However, he he hasn't done a whole lot of cool stuff. You know, he tripped and got eaten by the sarlacc which then burped after eating him Mm -hmm. that's kind of the high point of his star wars career so far so i'm happy for tomorrow morrison and for star wars fans that actually get to see this character do some cool shit in this episode yeah definitely it's cool seeing this cast kind of assembled we get to see characters come back from season one we get boba's grand return we get cardoon at the end kind of teasing this larger team's gonna be put together to get the kid back over the course of episode seven and eight so yeah this cast in particular was Pretty cool to see on screen together. Well, let's jump into a uh, just a quick summary here. So we start off the Mandalorian uh, arrives with Grogu on Tython. Uh, he places him at the temple so that he may choose his path as a Jedi. Boba Fett arrives in the Slave One ship, so cool, uh, with the mercenary Fennec Shand and demands the return of his Mandalorian armor. Mando agrees to trade the armor for the safety of Grogu. Uh, later, shuttles arrive with the stormtroopers who attempt to capture the child. Moff Gideon destroys the Razor Crest from orbit while sending new robotic dart troopers down to capture the child. Fett and Shan agree to help Mando rescue Grogu to honor their debt with him. They head to Navarro and the Slave One to seek out Cara Doom. Impressed with Grogu's growing force powers, Moff Gideon informs Dr. Pershing that the donor is available once again. All right, so before we get into our discussion, I do have a hot take here that I need to bring up. I haven't prepped Matt and Keith for this, so they might be a little surprised. I don't think Slave 1 looks as cool in sunlight. Well, it's not as cool in sunlight. That's true. It's not as cool, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, we've really only seen it in space and on the rainy planet of Kamino. I know. And it looks pretty cool there, but when you see it in, in, in broad daylight, I don't know. I know. Maybe it's a little bit silly, but then it starts to turn and starts to land the cool way it goes. It goes horizontal. That's pretty cool. I still think it's my. It's still my favorite ship. All right. Well, that's just my take. Uh, if I'm wrong, if you think I'm full of shit, go ahead. Send us a message on Instagram and let me know at the Arnie's. Let them know, people. Let them know. Let's get into our discussion here. Matthew, you want to take us away? Let's jump into it. So let's talk about the title drop in the intro because I think this is one of the best we've had. Obviously, last week was really cool whenever the words the Jedi popped up. But to be fair, it was a bit expected because we actually got to see Ahsoka's action sequence before that. And I really like the surprise factor in this episode. We see this cute scene following up on the fatherhood elements of the previous episode. Mando is calling the kid Grogu now, and he's continuing to encourage him to use his force powers while clearly being disheartened that his mission goal would separate them if it succeeds. So it kind of felt very sweet, but then all of a sudden, boom, 
the words, the tragedy pop up. And it's like, oh my God, <laughs> like what an effective start. What were your guys' thoughts? And were you surprised that this sem- like seemingly sweet intro leads right into this title drop, leads to Tython? Because like we said, I think we kind of thought we were in for another side quest before getting here. Yeah, I was shocked when that uh, when that opening title crawl happened, especially because like you said, Matt, you know, this, this really is a show kind of about the Empire trying to kidnap a child. So that premise doesn't really leave a whole lot of room for you know, these sweeter, heartwarming moments. So when we do get that, it's very rare in this show. And this was a very nice moment. You know, they're practicing some of their force powers and all that. And then, yeah, the tragedy pops up. And I literally have in my notes, the tragedy, oh no, like what's going to happen? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that shocked me. And, and I, it definitely hooked you from the beginning when you see that come across the opening screen. Definitely, definitely. What about you, Keith? I was scared. I was trying to, you know, come up with an idea of what would happen. I was thinking... We were going to get a death from maybe another main character, like maybe Grief Cargo would make an appearance and then he dies. Or uh, and or my other theory was that uh, Grogu was going to get separated from him at some point, which yeah. that came to happen. So, uh, yeah, that's my initial thoughts on the title drop, which is pretty cool. Because like you said, Austin, they start off with a really cool moment and then that just they just plant that title on us and it kind of flips the uh, switch on us. There are other tragedies, too, because we get to see the Razor Crest, this really cool ship, explode before our eyes. And we got to talk about the biggest tragedy of all is that Austin thinks that Slave One looks awful. <laughs> That's not what I said. I said it doesn't look as cool. Don't oh, twist okay. my words. Um, uh, at, but as for going to Tython right away, that was certainly unexpected. Yeah. Um, you know, I really thought, especially the way the show flows, I really thought we were getting a side story. And honestly, maybe this is just a case of me not fully understanding what I want from this show, but I was kind of looking forward to a side story. I think that's mainly because for the past few episodes, we've kind of known where we're headed yeah. and we reached those objectives in the last episode. So I was kind of excited to see something new. However, I certainly did appreciate that we furthered the main story right away as well. Interestingly, yeah, it, it it's, it's a, like I said, it's a weird meld of the main story and the side story to Austin's point, because we do get to see Grogu on the stone, kind of get attuned with the, the seeing force. Stone. The seeing stone, yeah. And kind of uh, call out to a Jedi, potentially. Who the hell knows? Then immediately, just a couple minutes into the episode, Boba Fett shows up and it, certain, it turns into this action sequence. The kid gets captured. So it's like, in a weird way, even though we went to Tython, which was part of the main story, he gets taken. So it ends up being kind of a weird side quest, too. We have to get him back now. Like, the main story changed. So I thought it was kind of this interesting way to... I guess change up the pattern that they've been on the last few episodes this season. Yeah, I think it's just good writing. And, you know, yeah. we we they kind of formed a pattern with us, and then it, then they throw us off, but they threw us off in a good way. Absolutely, absolutely. So obviously, we got to talk about the beautiful elephant in the room, Boba Fett. I did not expect him to show up in this fashion. Like we've talked about previously on this season, I thought maybe he would be the finale stinger, but we got him in a just a shock. He just shows up out of nowhere. Turns out he has been tracking Mando because of the armor. And then we end up in a situation where Grogu needs to be protected while meditating. And then the three of them, including Fennec from season one, have to survive this confrontation. So what did we think? Because like I said, we thought we had so many theories about how Boba might or might not show up the rest of the season. And this kind of comes in almost unceremoniously. Half of my theory was right. I had the theory that he was going to get interrupted by Boba and the Slave One on the way to Tython. Mm. So Boba, Slave One does come in, but it's on Tython. So it was, I was almost there. Almost there. But I was a little off. I my The biggest portion of my theory that I got right was I thought they were going to meet as adversaries. And they do kind of do that, but they get over it really quickly, which I appreciated. They do bond together and strike that deal of I'll give you the armor if you then help me protect the kid. So that was really cool. Um, what I'm the most curious, though, with Boba Fett, though, is uh, the Razor Crest did get destroyed. So Mando doesn't have a ship now. His only transportation is Slave One and Boba. So I think Boba's around, at least for the rest of this season. And I honestly am kind of thinking that Mando might be given Slave One at some point in the show as well. I don't know if I would like that, to be honest. I think Slave One has to be with the Fett family. It just It's iconic. Yeah, I don't know. Because then how will he get around? I mean, will the series change where he doesn't need to move around as much? I doubt it. So he'll need a ship of some kind. I mean, it de- it depends on how much Boba Fett we get throughout this series, I guess. I mean, if they stay, because my theory, we all we were all basically right with some of our theories. Mine was that by the end of the season, Boba or like season three, like soon ish, that Boba would join kind of the Mando team that right now is mostly Grief Karga and Cara Dune. But now we got Boba and Fennec there as well. So I don't know. I don't know how the future will play out or how long we can expect Boba to be around. So I'm sure that will impact whether or not the Slave One is like the main transportation. 
So we mentioned, you know, Boba Fett showing up. Uh, Really, after that, this episode does kind of become just one long action sequence. Um, I think Boba Fett certainly has some cool moments. He's definitely is the high point of the show. However, overall, I don't think the setting that they're fighting in is all that interesting or exciting. And I don't think the characters really have a whole lot of cool stuff to do. Um, So that is really why I'm just kind of mediocre on this episode overall. I get that. I think this is probably the first time I'm going to agree with Austin when it comes to some of this stuff. Because Austin has said throughout this season that he thinks that Mando should be a bit more involved in some of the action sequences we've seen. And I've always kind of disagreed with that. But this is the first time where I was like, wow, Mando's been knocked out for a really long time. (laughs) Um, I wish you could have got that dynamic a bit earlier where he joins the battle and then once he does join it gets weirdly worse where he's like in a half slow-mo standing in front of fennec taking shots to his beskar armor it looks kind of shitty um it's speaking of fennec too it it also is weirdly like a one-woman show for most of this fight like boba's even absent for a good portion of this yeah it's cool for fennec like she had some cool moments some cool stuff to do but ultimately it's just her taking shelter behind some boulders and then returning fires at stormtroopers that is true but then it changes because we do get some shots of boba completely murdering some of these stormtroopers by just smashing their helmets in which was yeah pretty cool and his stuff is cool yeah yeah and then of course once he gets into the armor it's uh it kind of changes up the dynamic in a pretty awesome way i thought it was so cool whenever he disappears for a bit and he comes back and they cut to him and there he is standing in his classic boba fett armor i thought that was awesome love him in the armor hate him from the waist down yeah i mean but it makes sense though because he was in the middle of battle so he didn't have time to change his cloak but yeah i get what you're saying it did look kind of weird i will say this though i guess i don't know if this is a hot take my favorite part of the boba fett armor is the armor if you go back and look at return of the jedi empire i hate the weird like tan colored fabric you know what i'm talking about it's like everywhere else it looks so stupid to me so i like that they at least made the change to have a darker cloak on under so it like it, to me it looks cooler with um you know, the green pieces of armor and this black cloak but I still think it looks a bit silly, so, you know, not fully there yet. Maybe we'll get a fully kind of a refined version of Boba as the series goes on. Did you guys like that little knee rocket that he's got as well? That's a new addition to the armor. I didn't expect it, but I thought it was pretty cool looking. He just like stomps down and then just fucking rocket shoot out. I thought it was pretty cool. Some kind of Iron Man thing right a there. A little bit, yeah. yeah. That's cool. I don't, I'm sure it probably sounds like I'm hating on it and it's fine, but. I, I was just left with so many questions. Like, how does this work logistically? How do you <laughs> yeah. load this thing? Do you have know. to bend your knee like that yeah. every time you want to shoot it? Like, it left me with more questions than I was expecting. I just, I've always wondered that anyway with the, with the other Mandalorian's armor. Like, how does all that work? And how does a jetpack work? How can he, how does he control it? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, to that point, though, the one thing I will say that was felt purposeful in a really awesome way is that I love that once we get past This episode where Boba is in the armor now for the rest of the action, he feels so much more in control than Cobb Vanth did in episode one. So we got some cool moments with Timothy Oliphant in the first episode, but it's just so cool how they shot this. And like we got to see some of the gadgets he has that makes you go, okay, that's Boba Fett. That's not just someone in the armor. This is somebody that knows how it works. And there was some cool action that came with that. Like he just looked a lot more comfortable in it in a good way. And speaking of the jetpack, I did appreciate that when they tried to land on Tython, Mando's like, oh, we can't land at the top, it's too small. There was a way for this episode to turn into a long hike, and that'd be the episode, hiking to the top of this mountain. I was nervous. So I was really happy that the next scene is cutting to Mando jetpacking with Baby Yoda to the top of that. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. That was was awesome. I love that. I love that. Gotta travel with the windows down. My only two negatives was I didn't love that they just weirdly never went back to Mando trying to get his jetpack. Because, I mean, the whole thing at the end is the Dark Troopers come down and take uh, Grogu, and Mando can't pursue because he doesn't have his jetpack. Because he and Boba got into a stalemate where he had to, he agreed to put it down, and then just he Why? never goes back to it. Why was that what Boba asked for him to take off? I kind of like that. Though. Wrist rocket, I kind of like that, that because off? Boba kind of knows, I guess, <laughs> maybe how OP the jetpack is. And he's like, I'd rather just deal with this guy on the ground. I don't have my armor yet. I don't want him messing with that jetpack. So I'm just going to make him take it off. But that being said, it is odd that. He just never tries to get it back. That was kind of weird. And then the only other thing was, and it's a, it's a small nitpick, but remember like in episode one that we actually see Cobb Vanth use the jetpack rocket thing? 
I kind of wish that they would have saved some stuff for this because this is Boba's big coming out party. He's using his knee rockets. It's like, holy shit, what is that? But there was a couple things I wish maybe they would have saved for this because it's actually Boba. Anyway, just a small thing. I did love how he shoots that troop carrier, though, and it falls into the yeah, other one. And so then Mando's cool. like, that's a great shot, man. And Boba's like, uh, it wasn't aiming for that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was aiming for the other one. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That was funny. So good. So, Matt, you mentioned the dark troopers coming down and taking Grogu. I really did love how uh, Boba chases after them in Slave 1, and then he sees Gideon's cruiser, and then you can kind of hear the fear in his voice when he goes, oh no, the Empire's back. Like, he's not fully scared, but there's definitely a tinge of fear in his voice when he says that statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They don't don't believe him at first, and he's like, oh no, I know what the Empire looks like, I'm looking at it, so I'm coming back down. So uh, yeah, I'm guessing he's been on, I mean, he's been on Tatooine this whole time, so he probably hasn't seen what's going on with the rest of the galaxy, so he- this is like a big shock for him. He's kind of unaware of what's going on outside of Tatooine. But that's that's another thing I hope we get in the next episodes. Now that we're going to be kind of, you know, flying around in the Slave 1, I kind of hope to get some Boba backstory between the end of Return of the Jedi and now. Like, I kind of want to know what's been going on on Tatooine. If he's just been looking for his armor, like, I want to know the story there. And when did he get out? Did he just get out, like, last week? Was he digesting like, How long has like he been in years? there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell knows? But I'm sure we'll find out something. He has those scars on his face. I'm assuming that's what that's from. I don't know. Yeah. Did his armor get peeled off in the Sarlacc pit and that's how the Jawas got it? Are the Jawas willing to go that close to a Sarlacc though? I don't know. Hmm. They don't They don't seem like the most courageous little characters. They could surprise us. Who knows? Alrighty. So uh, we do kind of get uh, some mentions at threads from the past. Uh, whenever Grogu is on the ship, Gideon shows him his saber and mentions it's a relic from the past. Um, do you think this is supposed to be like a like a precursor to lightsabers, this dark saber? Like, what do you think he meant by that? Uh, yeah, I guess it's some sort of ancient saber. I'm not too sure. It's obviously not. I don't think it's as advanced as a lightsaber, though. It seems yeah, like it, it would be. It looks older because it's like, yeah, it's and the the actual blade is like a physical material. It looks like. Yeah. And it's an actual blade. Like, it looks like a samurai blade. It's not yeah. just a, a beam of light. And Moff asked him, like, have you seen this in days past? It's like, does he know how old Grogu is? Because I mean, because we we know that from ah- Ahsoka telling us that Grogu is old enough to to have been at Coruscant yeah. during the Jedi Temple days. And so some of the other threads from the past that we get is Boba also mentions his father fought in the Mandalorian Civil War, and then also from another episode we know Bo Katan wants that dark saber to help retake Planet Mandalore. So do you think Bo-Katan, Moff Gideon, and Boba Fett are maybe a little bit more connected than we realize? Or do you think all those statements is just a coincidence that I'm reading too much into? I guess it depends on how Moff Gideon got the saber. I mean, if he just found it, then maybe not. But I mean, if he had to put in some work to get it, then presumably maybe they are connected. And the Django stuff was cool. I liked that we found out he was a foundling, just like our Mando, and then he fought in the Civil Wars. And then based on what we know from Attack of the Clones, I guess he got kicked out for a time and then ended up on Kamino and became kind of this you know he was the donor that created all the clone army so which led to boba so i like getting that backstory as well and i i would presume i would presume that maybe not the rest of this season maybe we'll get a bit more background with moff gideon but i, I would i would think season three i think we're gonna see some big mandalore retaking dark saber bo katan ahsoka boba everybody coming back i think that's where that might play out and I also got to imagine with Ahsoka having some sort of connectivity to the Clone Wars, she may not know who Boba Fett is, but I have to imagine she's at least heard of the Fett family. So maybe if we ever get a scene of them interacting, we might get some more backstory that way as well. Yeah, she probably has. Um, and we know that she's very close with Bo-Katan since that's how we found Ahsoka this season. So there, there at least are like tangential connections. So we'll get some kind of payoff there, I would have to bet. What do we think of the follow-up from last episode with Ahsoka that Grogu is potentially being tempted by the dark side and just anger in general? Like, it seems like at the end here, after being captured, he wasn't just throwing those stormtroopers around. It seemed like at one point he was choking them, trying to kill them. So what do we think this will lead to, if anything? Like, do we think that whoever Jedi answers the call that will come in presumably the finale, like... Is that going to pay off? What is the payoff to Moff Gideon's donor plan? Is Grogu headed down a dark path? Lots of stuff set up at the end here that I'm kind of curious about. I'm, so I'm not too sure he's headed down a dark path. I just think he doesn't know how to control his powers mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. And because he hasn't used him in so long and he hasn't had the proper training. And he's really only been – he's been protected by Mando this whole time. So he's with these strangers and he's freaking, he's freaking the hell out. So I don't know if it's really a path towards dark side. I think we also got to remember – 
he's a scared kid. Yeah. He just had his father figure, like he was just ripped away from his only father figure. He has all these powers that he doesn't know how to control. And these guys are pointing guns at him and he's trapped on a scary ship. So yeah, he's he's throwing these guys around. He's doing everything he can to keep them off of him. But you're, you are right, Matt. At one point, it's very clear that he's trying to choke these guys to death as well. So, And that, right. as we know, Force Choke is really only used by the Sith. As Keith would So he know. definitely does have some darker tendencies. As Keith would know, maybe he'll start shooting lightning out of those those little three-clawed hands he's Who got knows? too. Who knows? Um, I just think this is such a perfect follow-up from the last week's episode because Ahsoka literally told us, I'm not training him. He's too close to you. And Ahsoka, as we said, she was so close with Anakin. Anakin was a weird situation where he wasn't an orphan like the rest of the Jedi. So whenever he finds out years later that his mom is dying, he freaks out and his response is he kills all their captors and the rest of the village. And Grogu just lost the person he was closest to. And his immediate reaction, like Austin said, is he's a scared kid. He And he's also – Grogu's the weird situation where he's 50 years old, but he's also still an infant that they tried to train in the past. So it's like he doesn't – he doesn't understand things the same way. So maybe he doesn't know the difference between like choking and like throwing someone around. Who knows? The point is we've seen how Grogu reacts now after being taken away from a familiar scenario. So it's kind of interesting. I also don't know how you would make Grogu go down a dark path just with the way his character design yeah, is. Yeah, that's Because it is a very cute character and I can't imagine just like putting a hood over him is going to make him look very intimidating. Right. So I I think they could maybe be hinting at some darker tendencies, but I don't think he'll ever... Like, I don't think we're ever going to have an episode arc where he's like a Sith Lord or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I guess it just depends on what he saw the Seeing Stone, too. I mean, Very true. What what was he seeing there? And what Jedi or what Sith might show up? Oh. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is normally the part where we would do a Boba Fett check-in, but we've got Boba Fett now. We're checked in on Boba. So let's do a Jedi check-in. Who do we think is coming down? Because I got to imagine at some point we're going back to the Seeing Stone. Who do we think... Is coming down when he reaches out to the Force next time. Uh, it could be. I mean, we know that Luke and Leia are. You know, this takes place after Return of Jedi, yeah. so they had just defeated the Empire by destroying the last Death Star. So they're at this point. Luke is doing his training, or probably about to start doing his training academy. So it could be him. It could be Ahsoka again, or it could be an unknown. Yeah, or maybe a known that we thought was dead. I'm seeing it all over social media. I don't want a de-aged Mark Hamill. I don't want another actor playing Luke Skywalker. I want Leia. I want Leia, baby. We've never gotten to see her as a Jedi, like a full-on Jedi. I want her to come on down, take Grogu, give us a little episode arc of her being a Jedi and doing some training. I think right now, I don't know what I want. I think I'd be happy with a lot of outcomes. But I think my bet right now is going to be Force Ghost Yoda and Mace Windu. Ooh, that'd be cool. I don't know if I want Force Ghost, though. I kind of want like a tangible Jedi. Yeah, and I I get why they would want to do that too, but I just don't know who it could be. That would make sense. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the Force Ghosts. All right, so let, let's track this. Keith, are you guessing Luke or are you guessing an unnamed Jedi? I'm not gonna guess Luke. I'd be really surprised if it was Luke. I'm I'm thinking it could be an unknown Jedi or a known Jedi from the past that we thought was dead and maybe is alive. That's where Ma- that's where Mace Ghost. Windu I think could come into play. That just seems like the easiest one since he died in such an odd way. Like maybe I don't know if that would happen, but it could be. We never exactly got a confirmed death on him. We just assumed he died when he fell out that window. So we never really we never saw a body. Uh, <laughs> so it could be. Um, who knows. So it sounds like Keith is kind of leaning towards Mace Windu. Matt is leaning towards some Force Ghost, and I'm predicting Leia. We'll see what happens. Um, last thing we got to talk about, though, we do quickly go back to Navarro. We see Cara Dune, and it sounds like Bill Burr's coming back. So it looks like we might get another heist episode. And the same guy that directed the Bill Burr episode um, last year, Rick Famiwa, is directing this one, too. So I, I guess right now it seems like the plot of next week is to kind of break Bill Burr's character Mayfield out because he can kind of point to where um, Moth Gideon's Imperial light cruiser could be. So then they're all going to team up along with Fennec Shan, Boba, Cara Dune, maybe Grief Karga. He really wasn't in that last scene, so I'm not sure. Um, but either way, we have a big team probably going in the finale after the kid. What is Bill Burr's role? He's that like the heist expert, right? Like he has the ship schematics? He's a sharpshooter, they say. Yeah. But I thought uh, Fennec is the sharpshooter. That's a good point. She is too, but but I remember when he, I think, I'm pretty sure when he went up to Cara Dune, he's like, can you pull up 
uh, the prison records for a sharpshooter named Mayfield. Yeah, I think they. I think That's he's so said, weird to me. Yeah, it doesn't fully make sense. I think it's just an excuse to get Bill Burr back, which I'm totally fine with. But I think the um, argument they're going with is for some reason he can help them find where the ship is specifically. It kind of makes me want to go back and watch the prison episode yeah. of season one because mm-hmm. to get his backstory because they did give a little backstory on. Well, him. actually, yeah, he, he was he was Empire. He was an Imperial. Yeah, he was so Empire. Guess... Then he turned to being independent. Uh, like bank robber, pretty much. <laughs> so, so because of his past, maybe he knows where the moth is taking his ship. I don't know. So it sounds like we've got two sharpshooters. We've got a Mandalorian. Yeah. We've got a former bounty hunter. We've got a pretty good team. What I want to know, though, who's kind of filling the soccer parent role? Who's bringing the snacks? I guess if Mark Hamill comes back, maybe he could bring some of that green milk. I hope so. Ooh, I hope so. Yeah, and it spills all over his chin <laughs> and like licks his lips again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think we have a bunch of a uh, a bunch of people that don't like communicating, don't like talking, that are going to be forced to. I don't think any of these people are good when it comes to snacking. So I'm curious to see how they play off of each other. And we know Bill Burr's going to be cracking some jokes, and we'll know that Boba Fett will stare at them and not understand it, and he won't laugh at all. And then Bill Burr will go, <laughs> "Okay, just kidding," or whatever he says. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it'll be interesting for sure. I don't know how they're going to play off of each other, but it's a bigger team than we're used to, so I'm excited to see how it works. We could Somebody could die also. Just throwing it out there. We could get a death. I'm just excited to see them flying around in the Slave 1. I think that's going to be... Oh, we know, we know, Keith. We know the Slave 1 action there. <laughs> All right, my last thing, since you know the end of the season is coming up and we're trying to predict everything. The two last, episodes. Two episodes left. Last thing we got to predict is, we, we talked about this already a couple episodes ago, but do we still think that we're leading towards... Something to do with Snoke might be what this whole Moff Gideon donor plan leads to, the creation of some force being that they need um, Grogu's blood for. Is that what we're leading towards, or is that change for you guys? Because I'm still thinking that. And another question to add on that, do you think there'll be any so- sort of communication with Palpatine at all? I would be surprised if, if they mentioned Snoke or Palpatine in this series, but I do think we are going to be getting some sort of reveal that directly ties into the rise of the front of the First Order. I, I do think we are headed that. I don't know if it's Snoke. I don't know if it's Palpatine, but definitely something that's going to kind of be like an aha moment of like, oh, this is how the First Order kind of rose to power. Yeah, I'd like mm-hmm. that. I think that'd be cool. I think we're going to get something along those lines in the next two episodes, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, How depressed are we that the Ray of the Crest is gone? Uh, I'm so sad. Such a great ship. Lots of moments we're not going to get anymore on this show. I know. And it sucks that they just repaired it last episode <laughs> for it to just be completely <laughs> destroyed now. So, But hey, at least we got that best car spear. We know money's on the table. There will be a fight between Mando, Beskar Spear versus Giancarlo Esposito with the Darksaber. And I can't wait for it. All right, everybody. I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of our upcoming content. Also, if you wouldn't mind sharing us with a friend, that really is the best way to help us continue to grow this show. At The Arnie's is our social, and thearnies.media is the website. We'll be back on Tuesday to discuss some overrated movies. Yeah, looking forward to that. We have some good ones on the list. Um, Also, Austin and I just recently discussed our thoughts on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We're trying to bring back some more gaming content. And in that vein, we will be talking about our preliminary Cyberpunk 2077 thoughts, unless at the last minute, the day before it comes out, they they decide to delay it another three years. So we'll see how that goes. That's a likely prediction. (laughs) That's our current plan. And on top of that, of course, it is the holidays. We got lots of cool holiday content planned. We're going to be reviewing the holiday movies that made us on Netflix. And we got a big holiday bracket showdown coming later this month. So look forward to that. Hell yeah. And check us out on Instagram at the Arnie's feel free to direct message us your thoughts on this episode and your theory on next week's Mando episode. We also have our overrated movies podcast coming out soon. So shoot us over any movies you think are overrated. Send us some of your star Wars hot takes too. I want to know them. I want to know them. Let me know if you agree about my slave one takes. All right, and also, if you do want to check out our website, it once again is thearnies.media. Uh, there you can subscribe to our newsletter to be alerted anytime a new episode drops. And we're also, we are in the planning stages for 2021, so shoot us an email and let us know any topics you want us to cover on this show. That's going to do it for us today, guys. We'll see you soon. This is the way. Yeah.